We learned a new note, didn't we? We learned F. Yeah. And we found that the F was conveniently located on the third fret of the D string. So that was great. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that this exercise uh, in involves the notes of E, F, and G. Yes. So where's my E? Well, the E we knew was a low E. Well, that's not much use if I'm going to play down there and then have to run all the way up there. So that's out of the game. I seem to remember when we were doing root and fifth earlier, in yeah. an earlier lesson, we found an E there. So that's the seventh fret of the A string, the third string. There was mm -hmm. an E there, so I thought, oh yeah, I've seen an E before. We were talking earlier about, you know, logic and common sense, and we need to remember all that and think, where have I seen this before? You know, mm -hmm. there's an E. I'm sure I saw an E around here somewhere. Okay, okay. I'll pick that E up. So I could play the E there, and then the F there. Okay. That's that looks a bit tricky. Yeah, it's good and bad. I've found the E, so I'm quite pleased, but actually I've created more problems for myself because physically that's really difficult. Interesting thing about, we talked about the symmetry of the bass guitar in an earlier lesson and the layout of the fingerboard. And you mentioned something which I think was really helpful here about a keyboard. When you look at a keyboard, you've got white and black. Mm -hmm. Now, a keyboard can be as long as a room. You know, if you go to a concert hall, they're massive things. If you've got one at home, they're much smaller. But essentially, a keyboard is the same... Uh, the same one octave cloned yeah. a whole bunch of times. And it's very easy to see that. We're all comfortable with that. We can see the black notes and we can see where that system starts again. It's much more difficult to see on here, but it does do that. So what I'm trying to say is there are lots of E's, right. and whenever you find an E, if it's not in a convenient location, look for another one. There's mm -hmm. going to be another one close by which will help you. Of the same pitch? Or? Yeah, of the same pitch quite often. So. Um, Let's do that. All Let's right. do it now. Here's the, the E that I remember from an earlier exercise. So I'm going to leave that there. Now that's E. Yeah. And I know I'm playing F in this new exercise mm -hmm. on the third fret of the D string. So that's just a little too big a stretch, yeah. even for me with fairly experienced hands. So I'm going to relocate that E. Instead of playing that E there, I'm going to put it somewhere else. I'm playing the F on the D string. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a D, sorry, there's got to be an E close to the D. <laughs> so if you think the logic through, you think, okay, well, that's F and that's yeah. D. Somewhere between there has got to be the E. Remember what we did for the, on the last string? Yeah, we found Okay, that. so just common sense. There's my F, third fret of the D string. You've got it too, thank you. If I let go of that and play the open string, the D, mm -hmm. the E has got to be in between. There's another E. One down again. Yeah. Like we did with the, okay, so that's second fret, second string. If there's any doubt or you want to check or double check it, just do exactly that. Play that E, and then go, which is the second fret of the D string, mm -hmm. and then go back and compare, compare it to my old favourite E, and see whether it's the same pitch. Good piece of advice, It's exactly yeah. the same pitch, so I know I can trust my ears. We mm -hmm. usually know when we think, mm, not quite sure that's right. So just check it. We've used our common sense, we've used our knowledge of the fingerboard, we're using a bit of logic and the alphabet, the musical alphabet names. The final clincher for me is always, let me just check how it sounds and then I'll know for sure. Okay. So this exercise is E in our new location, mm -hmm. the new note of F, and our old G, which we played before when we played the octave shape. So okay. And that we're doing with the first, the second, and the fourth finger. That's right. First finger on the second fret E. Mm -hmm. Second finger on the third fret F. Good, Natalie. Yeah. And then fourth. So these are all fretted notes on the D string. All fretted notes on the D string, all along one string. Nice, yeah. convenient hand position. You probably find, I don't know how it feels, that's quite a stretch for the hand. I can't, actually, if I was in a static position, yeah. my, my little finger doesn't Isn't, reach that. No. So you'll just have to cook the books a bit <laughs> and just move your hand a little adjustment, just make a little adjustment. All right, let's have a go. Yeah, let's try it. Uh, the rhythm for this is quarter note, quarter note, half note. Remember, we learned Same about again. half notes before the break. So one, two, three, three four. four. There you go, great. E, F, G. Second fret, third fret, fifth fret. Second fret, third, third fret, fret, fifth fret. First finger. First, second, fourth, fourth finger. And the rhythm G. is 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And note values are quarter, quarter, half note. Quarter, quarter, note, quarter, quarter note, half note. I made a mistake there. Did you hear that? E, F, G. No, I was concentrating on my own performance there, Terry. Great. Good, well played. You were concentrating, yeah. Good, so I was concentrating. You played it better than I did. The way my mouth was hanging open. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling funny faces. We all do that all the time. Exactly. Concentrating so much. So there we are. We've just learned the new note of F. Yeah. And we've learned not a new note, but a new location for E. Mm -hmm. And we know there are plenty of other E's knocking around the bass, but that's for later. What we should do now is kind of just glance back. You remember the octave shape we were looking at in an earlier lesson? Two along for me and two up or two down, depending yeah. on how you look at it. Yeah. yeah. So that was starting on a low note yeah. and going high. We just learned the note of an F. Yes. If I asked you to play an octave above F, mm -hmm. you probably find that difficult. Actually, you probably find it impossible. Well, there's no, I there could is, go too long. But you can't go too up. But I've run out of strings. Yeah. So there are times, of course, when you can't play a higher octave. What do you do then? You just use your common sense. You think, well, if I can't play a higher octave, I can play a lower octave. Could I play a lower octave? Yeah, so just always keep your wits about you and think, well, if I can't do that, what about the opposite? So can you reverse that octave shape? Literally that same shape? Yeah, instead of going two up and two across, go two the other way. Two down and two back. Ah. Yeah. There's a, an illustration of that in the notes. Yeah. So you can look at that up close. Mm -hmm. So there's the F. So we need to go. Which what do you want to do first? Which way do you think of the shape? Go down that two way. frets first, yeah, and then down two strings. Okay, and that because that would be the same if you were at that F and you wanted to go up, wouldn't it? It's literally the same pattern. Two along takes it to there. Yeah, so it's a good thing to move shapes around. Um, you can compare them to one another, and the way we were saying earlier, you know, relative comparison. So mm -hmm. there's the high F. I can't yeah. play a higher F. No. So maybe I can find a lower F. That octave shape's really valuable tool. So yeah. there's my F on the third fret mm -hmm. of the D string. That's, That's the new note we learned. Fourth on the second there. There you go. And then I'm going to go two strings towards me and then two frets along. And you use that kind of claw, that first finger and fourth finger. It's another very valuable hand shape for the bass. And there's our octave shape. Yeah. And if you find yourself down there now, just to double check it, think, let me just check that that octave shape, my old octave shape, going up, low to mm -hmm. high, works. Can I go up to and across to? Absolutely, because that's where we came from. Yeah, so it's just taking that shape and looking at it the other way around. Yeah. Can I try something else? Are you Good all right? On, then. You got any? I've got enough, a little bit of brain space left. Okay, yes. let's do it. We've been doing uh, new notes today. We've done F mm -hmm. and we've done the backwards octave shape high to low, yes. and then we've checked it from low to high and said, yeah, that's absolutely fine, it does work. What about root and fifth? Why don't we do root and fifth as well? We did ah. that in an earlier lesson, and I like to do that because it shows me that there's the root, there's the octave, I know the fifth is halfway. Yeah. So what I'm going to try and do now, and we'll use an exercise from the GigaJam files here, mm -hmm. is play root, fifth, an octave. octave and a little exercise combining those three notes so mm. we've got F that's our low F low F on the first fret of the E string yeah. using the first finger there's the octave we're very comfortable with that shape yeah and root and fifth is kind of halfway house yeah there you go very good so the fifth to recap that is two along and instead of going two strings across as you would for the octave it's just one yeah all right and you can see how they relate to one another those shapes Okay. Big L and little L, if you like. Yeah. Ah, capital Good. L, little L. There yes. you go. So, and I would probably uh, mess around with these uh, uh, in advance of doing the exercise mm -hmm. as well as after it to just try and find my way around and maybe come up with some F, C, F, root, fifth, root. And I know the name of those notes. F. C, because I was paying attention during the root and fifth thing when we counted up. Let's run. Let's run that by again. Okay, we learned we learned the low note of F. Yeah. And that's on the third fret of the mm -hmm. D string. What we've been doing is going backwards with our octave shape to our lower F, our root F. Okay. So there's our octave shape. And then how do we work out our fifth? I pushed you even further and went. Okay. There's the root. There's the fifth. There's the fifth shape. Yeah. And normally we count up the alphabet. F, F G, G A, A B, B C. On the fifth finger, yeah. So, F, 
root C fifth yeah. F root. And we've looked at that C before, I think, haven't we? We've seen that C before many times. In fact, it was probably the third or fourth note that we learned. So maybe if I play the exercise. Mm -hmm. Let's play it without the extractor, just so we can really concentrate on this. OK, so I'll just play a random exercise, which is just root and fifth things. OK. And I'm going to use half notes. So half it goes notes. one, two, three, four, one, two, That's quite nice, three, bearing it up, four. actually, because the half notes give you that little bit extra time, don't they? Yeah, it gives me more time to think, find the note, yeah. send a message to my finger, please be there, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, it's just taking it nice and chilled. And yeah. you could try it with quarter notes, couldn't you? You could try it with quarter notes. So that's F, root, fifth, octave. Terry, thank you very much. Another Pleasure. informative lesson.